I think I'm getting land sick. I haven't caught a fish in two days. It feels like I'm falling apart. Could you please describe what you see in the following images for me? That's a snapper. And this? That's a bass. Looks like a can of Ados. That's a kawaii. That's a Mercury Verado. It looks like a Stabycraft 2400. Okay, Nikki. Try this Ados adhesive. This will help you hold it all together. Ados, proud sponsors of Ados Addicted to Fishing. I'm Nikki Sinder, and since I could hold a handline, I have been addicted to fishing. Whether it's stray lining for snapper, jigging for kingfish, dropping deep for hapuka, or jumping in and going spearfishing, I love it all. each week as I road trip around the country, travelling to both New Zealand's most iconic fishing destinations and stepping off the beaten track to show just how good Kiwi fishing really is. Whether it's a girls trip, fishing with a local or riding solo, I am on a constant quest to satisfy my insatiable fishing addiction. I'm Nikki from ADOS Addicted to Fishing. This week we're taking you to a place that's on every fisherman's bucket list, the infamous Wanganella Banks. We picked a great weather gap and we start our journey from the Tutukaka Marina with a huge 800 nautical mile round trip ahead of us. The Wanganella Banks is a really special piece of water. It's found on the fire tectonic plates, with the shallowest part being around 50 metres, coming up from 2,000 metres. There's no rocks awash, but below the surface holds huge upwellings and strong currents which contribute to this area being arguably the world's best fishery. Then we leave Tutukaka at 6 o'clock in the morning, and it takes us all that day, all night, all the next day, and all the next night, and 48 hours later, we arrive on the bank ready for fishing. And so it's a real, real, real bad case of are we there yet? Especially this time of year when we'll be going through cold water the whole way, so the likelihood of a stray marlin on the way up or a mahi bay are pretty slim. My earliest fishing memory would be the first day that I ever went fishing, which was in a 14 foot 6 plywood boat with Dad in the Ragler Harbour. And the first fish I caught was a um, quite a good-sized gurnet. I brought it over the side and it croaked and flapped its wings and beat it, ah, and threw it over the side. 22, 23 years ago, I took two years off work and um, me and another guy, we spent two full years on the boat and we built it from scratch. It's uh, 62 foot long. 25 feet wide, and um, but we've been using it ever since. It's had three coats of paint, two sets of engines that's worn out, and it's still going strong. When I'm fishing, I'm quite methodical. I record every fish that every marlin we catch, which rod holder it's caught from, what lure it's used, the time of the day, the angler, and uh, estimated weight. And we're up to, or think it's, around 670 we've got on the boat now, but most of those have been in the last three years. The daylight has just broken and we are here at the Wanganella Bank. Our water temp is 18.5 and we're going to come into some warmer water, which is a recipe for success. We've got our spread and it's only been about 10 minutes, but it's feeling pretty good. We've got the birds working, it's all looking so positive. How many times have you gone home without seeing something unbelievable? Oh, we see something pretty special every time we come up here. Yeah? Yeah, and you get the same buzz and the same feeling, like a bunch of children actually running around the boat. I was just saying to one of the crew before, I was sitting there just watching the spread and I said, man, I feel like a little kid who's so excited and just waiting. Oh, it's a very special place. Yeah. 
You brought your son here last time, didn't you? Yes, and he was lucky enough he was here for his 21st birthday. 21st birthday? He had a party booked in town and he had the opportunity to jump on board and cancelled the party and... Oh, no I brainer. He, he got four marlin on, his, on the day of his birthday. So did he? He was wrapped. And there was a triple strike on the first morning at 6am, wasn't it? 6.15. 6.15. He got a triple, yeah. yeah. So we've been very blessed with some really good weather coming out of here. We've had the, the wind pushing us here, and then we've got a couple of days of five knot variables, and then we've got the wind that's going to be pushing us home. So we saw the weather, and we're just like, man, we just can't resist. There's been rumours of a few yellowfin being here as well, with it being November. You were saying that um, you know some people that have been through here yeah, previous yeah, years? Yeah, and commercial fishermen that have fished here, but yeah. yeah. But so far, I mean, it's only early in the day, but so far, they no like. <laughs> Hey, it's still early, it's, it's still early. early. Yeah. Let's give them a chance. They're probably just coming from every corner. They can see they can see something splashing, they can hear our motors. They'll be here soon. They could be cameras, right? <laughs> well that's another thing. Yeah. Don't even let's not even say that. Let's not even say that. Whoa, tuna, yellow fit! Yellow fit! I just saw a yellow fit! Yeah, baby, we just saw a yellow fin. Oh, it's all about to happen. After the break, we battle with some of the best fighting fish in the ocean. This week, we've left Tutakaka and we've embarked on an adventure travelling more than 400 nautical miles offshore to the Wanganella Banks. The Wanganella is a special place because it is just mayhem. You imagine the best days fishing in the 20, 25 years I fished on the coast and at the Three Kings. The absolute unbeatable ultimate was to try and get 10 in a day. Our very first trip to the Wanganilla Bank, we got 10 the first day, 12 the second day, and 13 the third day, and we just thought we were in heaven. And that was our worst ever trip we had. And so now we go back and now the boys get a bit twitchy if you don't catch 20 in a day. Less than an hour after arriving at the Wanganella Banks, we encountered our first sighting, and it didn't take long before we were on a double hookup of yellowfin. We are on! And just like that, Captain Phil's yellowfin had jumped off his line and everyone started to look at me. Okay, it's all up to you, Nikki. Come on, come to mama. Neat fighting fish. Yeah, they are. They're just awesome. What are we on? 13 kilos of drag. Cats. Sit back on him, always taking the line. Love him, Ty. Yellowfin tuna are well known for their strength and their delicious taste. Just as we get him close to the boat, he 
he's off for another run. Closer to the duck board and realise that we may need more than one gaff to bring him on board. He's not a small fish. Grant, what are we calling it? Uh, 78. 78. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Woo! Tackle tips and tactics, brought to you by Smart Marine. It is so good to see the return of yellowfin in New Zealand waters this season. So what I've done is I've given Nathan Adams from Rego Lures a call, and he's given me a couple of his top tips on targeting yellowfin via lures when you're trolling. So say that you're coming up to a workup and the dolphins are not bothered by your boat, they're not even interested in what you're doing, and you can tell that what they're doing is actually rounding up some bait. Um, if there's tuna in that workup, what you want to be doing is trolling your lures ahead of the workup and in front of the dolphins. Now, going in front of those dolphins is the key piece of advice from Nathan. Uh, and that is how you'll run over the tuna and hopefully hook up. A couple of other things, the colours that seem to work really well for targeting tuna is a lot of your uh, bright colours like your fluoro green, your fluoro yellow and also your lumos. For all your fishing needs, head on down to your local Smart Marine store. Stay tuned for some more insane yellowfin action at the Wanganella Banks. And we're hooked up again. This week on the show, we have done our biggest fishing adventure we have ever done. We've travelled 400 nautical miles offshore to the Wanganella Banks to chase yellowfin the size of cows. I'm drawn back to fishing because, I mean, it's just a really good way to relax. And now that we've started fishing further and further away, less phones, no news, and you just disappear for eight, nine days, and the rest of the world goes by without you, so it's quite excellent. Both me and my father have done a lot of fishing. He introduces his kids in the little boats and things like that. And then when, at the age of just shifting to high school, we shifted up to Wangarei. Then I discovered game fishing, which was a whole alien, new thing to me. And yeah, that was possibly the best or worst thing I ever discovered. There he is. Check this out. We've got massive yellowfin and they're busting up the surface. They are just jumping and smashing through the water. This place is insane. I love it. Our lures are just about to go through them. Just signaling out to the captain so he can see where to go. How long since you caught a yellowfin? Since I caught a yellowfin, that's for Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, no pressure, eh, Toby? No pressure, but get that fishing. Oh, oh, oh. Have you ever put one in a chair before, Captain Phil? Never before in a chair. I've always been too young for that caper. <laughs> My mate, Captain Phil. He's, uh, he's one of the ones that's shown me a lot, a oh. lot of techniques when it comes to catching kingfish, and I'm looking forward to seeing his technique on a yellowfin. Bird completely stationary, and he's pulling 13 kilos of drag, effortlessly. Good fish. 20 kilos of drag. 20. Sorry, 
Persian queen tea. Now let me tell you, you cannot beat the feeling of the weight on the harness yeah. on your back when they start just running off on you. There's nothing like it. We've got perfect conditions. As you can see, hardly even five knots. Virtually no swell. Yellow's been jumping out of the water everywhere. <laughs> I feel like we're in a dream. You know? This doesn't feel real. It is just so awesome. What I'm doing is I'm actually moving the chair. As the line angle changes, we're moving the chair so that he's completely straight with it. We don't want the tip of that rod to twist at all. Leading up quite nicely at the moment. Yeah. So how does it compare? You've always done stand-up. You've never done it in the chair until now. You're huffing and puffing. I don't know if What's I should actually say, the, say what I'm thinking. <laughs> it's all right, Phil. We'll Hopefully. just beep it out. <laughs> I'm just wondering how I can get a chair to fit in my boat. <laughs> On the shiny, there's, there's 80, 60, 70, 80 kilo jelly beans jumping out of the water. I feel so grateful to be here right now to experience this. Check this fish! This is real! <laughs> Rough when the old angle's got to get out and get on. Yeah. You get streamlined, they get themselves. Yeah, look. When they want to go fast, they tuck these in. And they look. And they're just streamlined bullets. No wonder they can feel some line. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. Wicked. Wicked, Sheena. Wicked. And we're hooked up again. <laughs> we actually saw this one hit and it did not look like a small fish. Woohoo! Taking a bit of line. slowly. Feeding the line with my hand. Notice that we're not using the left hand to pull up the rod.
<sighs> Another fantastic question, Nikki. I'm shaky. That was that awesome. was worth it. Awesome. Good on you. We actually yep. saw that one. I don't know if we got it on camera or not, but you guys actually saw that one take the lure, didn't you? Yes, yep. Oh. Another fabulous fish. Another unbelievable fish. Yes. Thank you, Universe, yeah. and thank you, Wanganellas. Excellent. <sighs> right, let's start dressing it. Here and Catch, brought to you by Trade Zone. So at the end of summer, when it's time to park the boat away for the colder months, what you want to do is grab out your CRC fuel stabiliser. Now this stuff is legendary. You put one capsule per five litres in your fuel tank. Uh, one bottle actually does up to 200 litres. So if you've got a 200 litre tank, you pop the bottle in, and then you want to flush it through your motor for maybe three to five minutes before you store it. And what that does is it means that it preserves the petrol stability so that next time that you bring your boat out and you hit the water, you're going to be tickety-boo. It also protects your fuel system from corrosion, which is really important. We spend a lot of money on our boats and our motors and we want to make sure that we look after them. For all your engineering needs, head on down to your local Trade Zone store. Check out the ADOS Addicted to Fishing YouTube channel to catch all of our previous episodes. And don't forget to head over to our Facebook page for competitions, news, reviews and updates. ADOS Addicted to Fishing adventures in confidence in our Stabycraft, which is powered by our Mercury Marine, and we tow it around with our Ford Ranger. Smart Marines supply us with our Shimano Tackle, and we find the best fishing spots with our Furuno. We cook our catch thanks to barbecues and more, and clean up using Bosch hot water products, supplied by our local Chester's Plumbing Store. We're reaching new heights with total access. We keep up to date with New Zealand Fishing News Magazine, and it all sticks together thanks to ADOS.